Hey guys, welcome to LZH Project. My name is Salman Francis and this is scripting edition of our LZH Project and fifth part of our video series. And in today's video we are going to see loops. So uh, there are uh, like three kinds of loops in bash scripting. Uh, for loop, while loop and until loop. And in this video we are going to take a look at for loop. So let's start for for loop uh, we have this syntax to follow. Uh, first, we will we use the word for. Then uh, the argument. Then the list. And then um, we use the word do. Then the action which we need to perform. And then at the end we use done. So let's see this thing in action and for first uh, uh, example I'm going to show you how you can write or how we can write a simple for loop to check users present in our etc pass wd file or in any file so let's create a file first and I'm going to use vim as my text editor so it can be more colorful so vim uh, let's call this file as for.sh okay and as always we start it with the shebang header bin bash and you can write here the author and then the date and today is 5th of May 2015 okay so to start for loop, uh, first let's uh, define a variable and I would like to define a file or a pass file and I'm going to use backticks and we will use cat etc pass wd file. Okay. Then what I'm going to do is I'm going to run a for loop for users in I will just explain you these things in a while so for users in variable pass file okay what I want to do is do equal pass file and done so what this file or this script is going to do first of all the pass file I'm going to I'm declaring this variable pass file which is equals to cat etc pass wd so this means that this variable will uh, this cat command will look into all the uh, data present in this etc pass wd and then for users this users you can use anything over here uh, it's going to store a temporary uh, very uh, value in this uh, users uh, you can say it's kind of a variable also and then for users in pass file like in this pass file all the users or all the data you can write even for data let's say we call it data for data in pass file do what just echo the pass file or print it on the standard out or our monitor so let's try to run this script uh, chmod plus x for for dot sh and if i run this you can see it just uh, printed all the information of this etc pass wd file on my monitor okay we can do the same with our uh, we can create another file let's say vim uh, users.txt and I'm going to create uh, let's say my username it pings hello world lzh project linux rules okay and now I'm just going to change in the same script the name of this file 
So it's going to just users.txt. That's it. And now it's going to print out all the information in users.txt. So that's how simple uh, for loop is and it this is how it basically iterates uh, through the data. So let me give you a simple example, uh, another simple example and I hope that you will understand it in a more proper fashion. So let's say we would like to uh, ping our three hosts. Uh, dot 1.4 this is the local host and then we have this is our gateway okay and this is another machine windows machine okay so what i would like to do is i would like to write a script which can ping these uh, hosts in a uh, single line I don't need to write all these hosts one by one and then uh, like it can waste my time if I'm just uh, writing all these hosts one by one. So what I'm going to do is I would like to create a script. Let's call it vim pinger.sh. Same with start with bin bash. Okay. So again, I'm just going to write um, like I'm not going to declare a variable over here. You can do it by yourself if you want. But let's call it a for IP in. You can call it anything but 168.1.4 space 192.168.1.1 and 192.168.1.235. Okay. So for IP in, this is the list. So that's why I, if you remember, I told you earlier that the for loop starts with the word for, then the argument, in this case, it's IP or where we declare the variable and for variable or for this specific data in the list. This is the list. So these three IPs are kind of a list. What we need to do with these IPs, do and ping okay I'm just going to ping them one by one or like once so it doesn't flood anything so what I want to do is for IP in this list ping these IPs that's it done okay let's ch mod plus x and finger and now you'll see what will happen. There we have it, perfect. So it just pinged all the hosts one by one and you can look at from the stats. Okay, perfect. So these are two examples, the simple examples that how for loop works. And now we are going to do some fun stuff and what we are going to do is we will write our own brute forcer with bash script okay and <clears throat> i would like to say here that this video is only for educational purpose and i will not be responsible for any damage done to anything so let's start with this uh, our own brute forcer okay in order to create our own uh, brute forcer with this uh, in our bash script we would like to first uh, we need to download one package the reason I will just uh, let you know in a moment but first uh, we need to download this SSH pass okay so let's check if this our jump provides us SSH pass if it's available yep that's good so we have this SSH pass okay the reason is because whenever you are trying to SSH let's say SSH root at 192.168.1.3 and you 
you cannot provide a password on this line let's provide like password see first if you let's say you say yes you have to pro provide the password so control C and let's SSH and dash help and here we have this option of binding providing the port but there is no option to provide the password uh, plain text password on the line so that is the reason this is not very helpful in brute forcing so what we would like to do is uh, we would like to create a password file okay and then we need to iterate all our like we will run a for loop which will iterate all through all those passwords and one by one it will try, try all the combinations so that's why I have downloaded this SSH pass okay now let's create a file uh, password.txt and let's add some passwords here um, let's say lzh lzh projects abc123 it pings it ping okay and cell one two three like stuff like that okay that's it and then we will start our script so let's call this script brute forcer again guys I'm just uh, would like to remind you that I take no responsibility for M any kind of damage done to your system or in any way and you are doing it at your own risk and your own responsibility this uh, video is only for demo purpose or educational purpose so let's start our brute forcing script and as always we started with bin bash author come on okay and date if you wish and you can write your description this is a educational script for brute forcing and I take do no responsibility for any damage done okay so what I'm going to do is I'm just going to write for pass WD in cat password.txt was our file so what I need to do do SSH pass hyphen P okay in this case pass WD is the variable this one so what it's going to do it's going to for pass WD in cat password.txt so in this variable it's going to store the value of cat pass WD uh, password.txt and this variable I'm going to use here so SSH dash P dash password okay and then I'm going to use simple SSH root at uh, the IP address where I would like to brute force 1.3 and done that's it this is our simple brute forcer so let's check if S uh, well SSH is working and let's make our script executable uh, brute forcer yeah and now for the magic moment let's see if it works brute forcer permission denied trying again again there were four login attempts since the last successful login okay so 
where are we at the moment show ADDR sorry IP show ADDR oh sorry about that and I think yes we are in 1.3 you can see that our SSH attempt is successful that's perfect if I just exit out you can see that the connection is closed and we are back in our Gloucester 2 perfect so we can try it again okay we are in Gloucester 1 now you can see that there were seven failed login attempts since the last successful login so we are we have successfully accomplished our task and we have successfully created our brute forcer for SSH so that's the end of this video I hope you have enjoyed it please do subscribe to my youtube channel and I'll see you in our sixth video of bash scripting thank you